Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Says the Vet. We're talking today about sleepy sickness, a common cause of recumbent, very lethargic, and even comatose, heavily pregnant ewes and goats. Please jump over to the YouTube channel to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next ones, and I will see you shortly. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Says the Vet. I'm Says your vet for today. So today we're gonna to be discussing a condition in pregnant sheep and goats called sleepy sickness. Its correct term is pregnancy ketosis, or you may hear it referred to as twin lambing disease in sheep. Now this is the disease of late pregnancy that causes the mum to be recumbent, so down, unable to stand, brain malfunction. Eventually she will slip into a coma and pass away. It's an illness that is essentially due to starvation. So starvation is the effect that we're seeing on the body, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's because you aren't feeding your animals enough. Often that is the case. It can be from a genuine lack of food, but commonly we see it, especially on lifestyle blocks and loved pets, because they're overweight and carrying multiple babies. So they literally cannot fit enough food into the stomach. There's just not enough room in there. So let's go back and start at the beginning. Pregnancy ketosis occurs when the energy demands of the babies are more than what the mum's taking in each day. So she's not eating enough to satisfy both her own body and maintain her baby's lives. Now there may be some other factors at play here but energy in and energy out is just the simplest way to think of it. So with this in mind it makes sense that the more lambs or kids a mother is carrying the higher the risk not just because she has more little ones taking up more energy but also because the babies are impinging on her rumen which is the big stomach chamber meaning she physically can't fit as much in. Now add on top of that, an animal that's being fed you know, poor quality low energy food or an animal that has excessive fat reserves in the abdomen even you know, taking up even more room and you have yourself a very at risk mother. We almost always see the syndrome in late pregnancy in the very last third trimester as the lambs or kids are getting larger and, eating and using more energy. Now just to put it in perspective for you, a year will goat doe carrying a single baby in late pregnancy, their energy requirements increase by 23%. If they're carrying twins, it increases by about 36%. And if they're carrying triplets, it increases by nearly 45%, so nearly double that of carrying a singleton. Now it can be triggered by a stressful event or anything that stops her from eating temporarily as well. So transport, mustering, poor weather, lameness, dental disease, or really any kind of disease or stress that stops her from eating enthusiastically. So pregnancy ketosis can definitely be secondary to other diseases, and it often is, which is why I always recommend getting your vet out. What you will notice is lethargy, anorexia, ironically she loses her appetite, and then brain dysfunction. And this is because the brain requires glucose, blood sugar, for energy. So while other parts of the body can generally rely on other forms of energy like protein and fat, the brain and the placenta generally cannot. They need glucose. So what do we see? Well, usually it occurs really late even in the last in the last trimester. So in the last one to three weeks out from labor, now you do need to be within about 10 days of labor for the lamb to be viable. So at that point we can induce the pregnancy safely, get those lambs out. Animals will lie down more than others as they're feeling really weak and lethargic and you can imagine all that extra heavy weight in their body is making it even harder still. When the brain becomes affected, we start seeing odd behaviors such as aimless wandering about, mouthing at food or sham drinking, which is where it looks like they're drinking the water but they're not actually taking anything in. Apparent blindness, um, startling easily, you know, looking like they're, they're walking into things. And stargazing, which is where they look up at the sky and just kind of stare in a really still fashion. And that's just telling us they've got a migraine and they're breathing through it. You may notice teeth grinding. That's a pain behavior in ruminants. It's an indication that she's got pain in the abdomen. Eventually, she'll not be able to stand. She'll slip away into a coma and she'll pass away. So what's actually happening inside the body? Now that I'm gonna be super brief about this, but it's for the vet students and the farming geeks amongst us. Here's what happens. Mum doesn't have enough blood sugar to support herself and her baby, so she starts mobilizing fat reserves. This fat gets broken down at such a phenomenal rate that it ends up clogging up the liver and the liver can't function properly. So now we've got liver damage. As ketone levels rise, they eventually start to damage the kidneys, putting her into kidney failure. So now we've got liver, liver disease and kidney failure. Eventually, the lack of glucose means the placenta shuts down, the babies pass away. She may abort them, but usually she just holds on to them dead inside her and then she will follow pretty shortly after. 
Now in terms of treatment, an early case may come right with just some ketol or glycerol down the throat, so that's a sugary drench that you can buy. I'm talking very early cases though, so where they seem to just be a bit lethargic and, and have a headache, but once they're more advanced than that, you will need a vet, so it may be a matter of giving sugar straight into the vein for the vet and correcting other metabolic imbalances, all the way to the other end of the spectrum where they may need to treat for liver disease, kidney failure and massive electrolyte imbalances. Either way, those lambs need to get out if mum's going to have a shot. So inducing her or a caesarean section, if she's up to it, is normally the route I'll go. But if it's advanced enough, then she's very likely to need stabilisation beforehand if she's got a shot of making it through surgery or labour. Now on top of everything else, her immune system is going to be severely depressed. So we can see a lot of secondary diseases, things like uterine infections and mastitis, secondary to pregnancy ketosis. So that's going to require treatment as well. Now for those of you at home, I cannot stress enough, nursing is crucial. She may make a full recovery if you've caught it early enough, but if she's been lying on a hard ground without being supported by a deep bed of hay or mattress, you're going to end up with a perfectly healthy animal with paralyzed legs. They squash their own nerves just from the sheer body weight that these girls are carrying around. So she will need a deep supported bed of hay and regular turning until she's well enough to support her own weight. So flip the hips from one side to the other multiple times throughout the day. If she's in hospital, I'd normally be keeping her on a mattress. So key here is prevention, and I really hope you've made it this far because this kind of is the crux of it all. The you and doe should not be more than body condition score three going into the third trimester of pregnancy. Feed high quality, energy dense feed in the third trimester, so this means long quality ad lib, so as much as she wants, lush pasture. And if you can get some pellets in, a couple of cups a day per animal, that's ideal as well. Do not go suddenly overboard with the pellets or you can run into different stomach issues, so you need to kind of wean them onto the pellets. If you can, separate those out that are carrying one baby versus carrying multiple babies, and then you can preferentially feed those that are carrying more as well. Make sure they're not overweight prior to pregnancy, feed generously in the third trimester, be acutely observant of the behaviour of your animals in that final stage of, of gestation so you can treat cases early, get those labs out, get mum back on her feet early. Okay guys, I'm going to leave it there for now. Please subscribe to the channel, comment, ask questions over on the YouTube channel so I can see and actually respond to them. This is such a complex topic, I'd love to actually do a longer podcast on what's actually happening inside the body if there's interest for it. I'm thinking maybe for vet students, so please do jot your requests and, and questions over there on the YouTube channel so that I can see them and I might go ahead and do that. Cool guys, alright, thanks for checking in, I'll see you in the next one, bye bye.